there. I'm Lori Ditto. Welcome to Make Today Count. And you know, eternity is coming soon. That's why today needs to count. And I want to help you understand how it is that God can take away pain. Now, in the last episode, we looked at the very first time I went to heaven and how God wanted me to give him pain. Now, how do you do that? And yet that is something that God needs to take away from us for our life to be filled with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. What he wants us to give him is regret and shame, failure, misunderstanding, and all those secrets that he knows about anyway. And so I want to begin with the word trust. Now, there are certain words that belong to heaven. And the word trust is one of those words. Now, we use trust on the earth, but I think we misuse trust more often than not. The scriptures say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Fear the Lord and put your trust in him. Trust in God's unfailing love, his word, his goodness. The scriptures teach God cares for those who trust in him. So trust is about a perfection. And I want to assure you, Jesus is perfect and you can always trust the Lord. You can trust God in the morning. Trust God in the evening. Trust God for your spouse. Trust God with your resources. Trust God with all of the treasures and hopes and dreams that you have. Trust God. But the opposite of this is do not trust. Did you know that the scriptures teach do not trust in horses or chariots. Don't trust in princes or riches. Don't trust your best friend. The scripture even teaches don't trust your brother, your children, your spouse, and don't trust yourself. You see, we've taken a word that goes this way. Trust God. And when you trust God, faith comes and remarkable healings and well-being, joy comes when we put our trust in God. But when we do this with trust... It gets very muddied and broken. You see, we were never supposed to put our trust in each other because it puts us in bondage. See, if I break your trust now, you know that I'm not trustworthy. And you need to keep an eye on me until you're sure that now I'm trustworthy again. And it puts you in bondage because who wants that job of making sure that someone is trustworthy instead? We can put our confidence in one another, which is first based on me. Trusting God because he will not let you down. Exclamation mark. Hallelujah. You can trust in Jesus and don't trust each other. Now, I used to clean houses. And I worked for a lovely woman. Oh my goodness, she was such a sweetheart. And she used to teach the Bible. And really, I would come over to her house. It really didn't need so much cleaning. As much as it was, she wanted to just train me up in all of the things about God. And I so appreciated being at her house. And, and when I was there, she would tell me, unlock scriptures that were difficult for me to understand. And this one day that I was there, she got talking about the coat of many colors that's described in Genesis 37. You see, Joseph was the last son, and he was a favored son. And so his father had a coat of many colors made for him. And she was explaining to me, that was bad parenting, she said. She said, can you imagine taking this brother and exalting him away from his other brother's she said, God does not do that. He can make each one of us feel like his favorite inside of the family of God. 
We each get to claim to be a favorite. And so she was explaining all about it, telling me that I needed to know that I am special to God, which I told her I do. I do know that. And she said, but I want you not only to know that you're special to God, but I want you to walk with an assurance of your salvation because the enemy is always going to come and try and take your assurance of salvation. And she took my measurements. And when I came back the following week, she had a beautiful jacket made for me. You see, my favorite color is blue. And she had found blue prints. Some of them had gold, some had silver, some had fire in the material. And she had patched all these little pieces of material together and made me a beautiful coat of many colors. And she said, Lori, you need to understand that because of the experience that you've had in God, and, and, and it's not that my experience is any better than yours, but that if you have had an experience in God, if you have the gift of salvation, then you are going to come under attack. And so she wanted me to never forget, hey, you're God's favorite. And he has big things for you to do, but you need to always put your trust in God. I thought that made sense. I said, okay. And I put the jacket on and I felt so special when I had this jacket on. I went to church the next Wednesday night and everyone wanted to know, where did you get that coat? And so Everyone knew that I'm God's favorite because I had already told them that, but they did not realize that I was also my friends, one of my friends favorites because of what I was wearing. Now, all this is getting ready to tie in to what it is I want to share with you. So I want to talk with you about the vision that I had and what was happening and why is it so important? And inside of this vision, what you need to understand is there are heaven words that we misuse on the earth. And we should stop that. Um, the word trust belongs to God. He will never let you down. He has never let anyone down. Do you know that if God ever broke someone's trust even once, he could not be God. If God ever lied, if he ever played favoritism and if he ever did any of these things, he would have to disappear. He couldn't be God. That's why it's so important that we understand who he is and his ability to take away our pain. So in this vision, I pop into a white room. And it's a classroom. And what happens when I'm in the vision is if there's white all around, the reason why the white is there is to stop me from becoming distracted, which I naturally have a problem with that. So how much more when everything that you're looking at is so beautiful and perfect. So I, I was in a classroom setting and there were all kinds of other people there. There were children there and people my age. There were males, females. There were older people there. And we were all there because we were taking this very special class. And what we needed to understand was the way things really work. And the teachers, you'll be so surprised to hear who the teachers were. We had people the secret service people who were there. Um, there was a centurion there. And I wonder if that centurion wasn't the same centurion who declared that surely that was the son of God. But we had people who used to be Roman soldiers who were there. And these elite group was getting ready to train us. And when we come back, I can't wait to jump back in and tell you more about this vision. See you in a minute. Hey, 
welcome back. I was just telling you about a vision where I got to go to heaven and I was working with like undercover secret service people in this amazing classroom filled with, with other people who were there learning. And they were trying to teach us about how crafty and deceitful Satan can be. You see, because the majority of our pain is because Satan is going to try and get you to turn against God. That's what he does. That's the only way that he can hurt God is by trying to get you and me to be deceived and then sin against God. Now, it's true you can repent. That's true. But how much better is it to just live your life holy? And, and I'm a student of holiness. I, I believe in it. I don't achieve it every minute of every day. But I want you to think about, like, let's say you're at a carnival and you're, you're winning and you get this, this prize. But if you remain holy in no time at all, you're up to the largest gift they can give you. That largest gift is the nearness of God. How valuable is holiness? How much do you value the nearness of God? And so we were being trained about, about the tricks that Satan will do. And, and I really appreciate children and their questions because they're just always so innocent. And some of the questions that children were asking was about, you know, does he hide behind trees? And I thought, well, you know, of course, that would be a child's question. But the answer is yes. The enemy is looking for a way to trip you up. God doesn't want you to be tripped up. So we need to be on our guard. And how much better if we link arms together and keep one another holy, right? And so we were learning these techniques about hanging out together and somebody having your back. We, I, I faintly recall Jesus sent them out in twos. That way there somebody is with you and can help you. Let's look at the scriptures. In John 8, 36, it says, Therefore, if the Son of Man makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Now, why is that important? Because in your salvation, you were made free. You are free indeed. You get to keep that. Let's look at John 1, 12. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Hallelujah. If you are a child of God and you believe in the name of Jesus, then you have um, a nearness, a closeness to God. Maybe you can't see him. Maybe you can't feel him. But what you need to know is God is there for you. He's there for me. And whenever I call his name, how important is it that we use his name with respect? Because every time I call his name, his ear is attentive to me. Jesus' freedom. He came to set us free. And how important are these principles that God has given us? And we need to understand that our freedom is under attack by the enemy. And that's what they were teaching us there. That he came to set us free and now you're free. So why would you want to go back and be a slave again? And if you're, if you're with Satan, that is his desire, is to make you his slave. And as a child of God, you get all the benefits of being with God in heaven. And so as they taught us and I listened to the children, you know, they were, they were telling us to make sure that you're with another believer. Don't be a lone ranger. Well, I didn't listen. We finished the class. Everybody was high-fiving everybody. And I walked out. I was busy. I knew I had things to do, places to go. And so I thought, you know, yeah, 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 I got this. I understand freedom. I understand how important every, every aspect is. I understand that the devil is looking for who he might devour. And so he's running around like a lion roaring, you know. 
But sometimes Satan can come so crafty, so deceitful, that you don't know that that was him. And so everyone is leaving and, and I'm alone. And, and I hear a man, he says, hey, Lori, don't forget your coat. And I turned around and there it was, my beautiful blue coat. The one that had been made for me, very special. It made me feel so special. He says, this is your coat, right? And I was like, uh, yeah, there's only one of those. And so I go running over to get my coat. I put it on. He helps me. He holds my coat. I put it on. And as I'm walking away, I put my hand in the pocket. And what I felt, what my fingers touched, sent fear all through me. You see, there was a pack of cigarettes in that coat and a lighter. Now remember, in the last episode, God had set me free from cigarette smoking. That equals pain for me. That equals bondage. That equals being separated from God. And as I stuck my hand in my coat, there it was, and I pulled it out, and now I was filled with shame because why would I have this? You know, the people here don't have this. And everyone had already left. And now it was me trying to battle this pain all by myself. And I couldn't remember anything that they had just taught me in this class, except that the devil hates me and wants to steal Jesus' beautiful bride. So I was like, what am I going to do? And all of a sudden, I remembered the prayer, the prayer that they kept telling us, whenever you don't know what to do, cry out to Jesus. Ask him for his help. Jesus, will you help me? Jesus, will you help me? And you can even shorten it. Just one word. He knows if you're talking to him. Help. Help. And I remember this is what I need to know. And you know, it sounds so simple, right? But when we're under attack, we don't remember to cry out to Jesus for help. And when I did, understanding came back to me. I have been delivered of this pain. And even though this looks like my coat, it smells like my coat, it feels like my coat, this cannot be my coat because my coat would not have this bondage in it. And I took this coat off. I put the cigarettes and lighter back in the pocket and I took this coat off and I handed it back to the man. And you know, as I handed it back to him, his, um, his countenance started changing and you could see, oh, he is a deceitful man. He is very deceitful and he's trying to trick me. He wants me to fail. That's what it is. He's, he's like, no, 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 Lori, this is, this is your coat. I'm like, no, I am free. I am free from cigarette smoking. I am free from needing a lighter. This is not my coat. And I will not allow you to de deceive me. And so I started calling my friends who had just taken this coat. I need help. And isn't that something that we have been taught makes you weak? If you ask somebody for help, oh man, that makes you very weak. And yet in the class that I took where all of the angels and the secret service people were trying to help me, you have to ask for help. Ask for help from God and ask for help for the people that God has placed around you. Because together you can overcome all of these things for freedom's sake. A class on freedom. Taken to heaven for a class on freedom. You know, we need to fight for the things that God has given us. And we need to hold on to those things so that we can get more freedoms from God. When we come back, I have another conversation to share with you. 
I think you're going to love it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I was sharing about a vision where I got to go to heaven. I was in a classroom. And the reason why it was so important to take this class is because of freedom. Jesus purchased that freedom for you, for me. He purchased freedom in him. And God is not a hard taskmaster. He wants us to be able to enjoy one another and to enjoy life. And, you know, bondage keeps us right. It keeps us away from God. I want you to think about the regret and the shame and the pain, all the misunderstandings that's happened and all those secrets that just seem to bury us. If anybody knew, we wouldn't have any friends. And yet God knows about them all. And as he had said to me in the first trip to heaven, some gifts are things I want to give to you and other things are things I need to take away. And he needs to take all those things away. And God can take it away, but if you're, not, if you're not trained, you'll just go back and pick it back up again. So how, how important is it that we stay free? You know, in James 4, 7, it says... Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee to, from you. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, you need to know if it's the devil. And two people are better at figuring that out than just one. But there is a time for you to resist and flee. There's also a time in Ephesians 6, 10 through 11, where it talks about stand your ground. Now, I think it's easier for me to retreat. I think I have an easier time at retreating. But God, he also wants you to stand your ground. And oh my goodness, what's it like when you stand your ground? You start to shake. You hope that God is with you. You hope he can hear your prayer help. You hope that the friends that you called on are coming. <laughs> and God has a miraculous way of making that happen. You know, I want to share this last encounter. My God is so good. He has delivered me so much that one night I was sitting talking with the Holy Spirit. And I told him, I said, you know, I really hate that I am addicted to Pepsi Cola. I used to drink at least 12 cans of pop every day. And I didn't care if I eat it. I didn't need to eat. I just needed to drink this Pepsi Cola. And I was talking to the Holy Spirit, finding out about what kinds of things in my life do I need to change? Am I free? And I asked him, will you deliver me? And this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, you have to ask God to deliver you. I said, will you ask him for me? He said, yes. And later, when, I, when, when we had finished, he came back, he said, the Lord said, yes, you may be delivered. You know, there's a freedom that you may need from whatever addiction you have. And I want to pray for you because Satan has set a trap, but God has given you this gift of freedom. And not only did God deliver me from cigarette smoke, but God has delivered me out of 12 cans of soda a day, and that's what he wants to do for you. Jesus, I pray for my friends right now who need help from secrets and from bondage, from whatever addiction that's holding you down. Maybe, maybe you used to be free and you put the coat back on, stuck your hands in there and realized, oh no, the Lord God 
who set you free once will set you free again and he will train you up like a warrior so that you can set other people free. Just don't grow weary in this good work that you're doing. Stay steadfast, stay steady because if you don't quit, you will see God coming with all, all of his pleasures to wrap around you. You are his favorite. And he has a coat, a coat that says that you are his favorite and you need to put it on and believe. Just believe that God is going to set you free again and again and again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen.